The Navy's new CMV-22B Osprey Carrier Onboard Delivery COD platform proven to be a game-changer. On its first deployment, the Navy's Air Chief said at a seminar on naval aviation on Wednesday, seven months after getting its initial operational capability rating, IOC. Vice ADM, Kenneth Whitesell, Commander of Naval Air Forces, Navair, and Naval Air Force, U.S. Pacific Fleet, said at a maritime security dialogue event sponsored by the Center for Strategic and International Studies and the U.S. Navair. With distributed maritime ops, longer ranges, distances between multi-carrier operations, distances from land-based areas, and the ability for the CMV-22B to plop down on unimproved spaces, it. The CMV-22B is a modification of the MV-22B, which serves as the basic medium-lift assault support aircraft for the U.S. Marine Corps. The C-2A Greyhound caught a twin-engine, propeller-driven design that first saw service in the middle of the 1960s, was to be replaced by the new aircraft. The CMV-22B has a number of benefits over the Greyhound and the Marine Corps MV-22 tilt rotor derivative, according to Whitesell. He claimed that it has a much wider operating range than the MV-22 due to its enhanced gas payload. Additionally, it has a little wider range than the Greyhound. With a 6,000-pound internal payload and two Rolls-Royce Liberty AE-1107C engines providing a combined 6,200 shaft horsepower, the Opsray has a range of around 1,150 nautical miles. In contrast to the C-2, it can also refuel via the air. The Greyhound, in contrast, has a range of around 1,000 nautical miles and is propelled by two Allison T56A425 turboprop engines, each of which produces 4,600 shaft horsepower. Then there was the problem of landing at night on an aircraft carrier. According to Whitesell, the Navy has previously been reticent to let Greyhounds to do night carrier landings, based on the avionics in that platform, but the CMV-22B can on medevac missions, not needing to launch the aircraft from a catapult proved to be crucial since medical staff didn't have to worry about how the patients would be affected by the catapult's extremely powerful lurching force. Additionally, he praised the Osprey for its adaptability in terms of its ability to quickly land, take off, load, and unload. It is able to get it onto and off of the deck. Fairly quickly, Whitesell remarked. I don't have to land to cod and clean the third and fourth catapults. Now I can land it like a chopper. I'm able to move it. I can take it back into starboard delta, a holding pattern used by helicopters and cod aircraft that fly on the starboard side of the ship and make right-hand turns at 500 feet, as soon as it offloads or before it is loaded. Despite the program of record projecting 48 CMV-22, the Navy only intends to purchase 44 of the aircraft from Bell Boeing. Fleet Logistics Multi-Mission Squadron 30, VRM-30, the Navy's first operational CMV-22B unit, was activated at Naval Air Station North Island in California in December 2018, and a ceremony was performed to commemorate the occasion. Following that, the service dispatched the initial group of potential naval Osprey crews to train with Marine Medium Tiltrotor Training Squadron 204. VMMT-204. On Wednesday, Whitesell praised the Marines highly for their assistance in instructing Navy aviators and crew on the Osprey. He claimed that the Marines trained our maintainers how to operate on this platform and taught our instructors and pilots how to fly this. The USS Carl Vinson, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier of the Nimitz class, made its first CMV-22B landing on its flight deck in the Pacific Ocean in 2020. Fleet Logistics Multi-Mission Squadron VRM, 30 embarked on the Vinson with the F-35C Lightning II and E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Squadrons for their first deployment in the summer of 2021. The Navy stated in a press release at the time that the first deployed detachment had a mission completion rate of 98% and a mission competent rate of 75%. The CMV-22B is a vital component of future carrier air wing deployments with next-generation platforms due to the cargo capacity needed to ferry F-35 power modules and associated logistics support.
Initial worries revolved around the amount of room the tilt rotor needed to launch and recover from a carrier, as well as how it would need to maneuver around the flight deck. Concerns regarding how the Osprey would fit on deck, according to Whitesell, were allayed by allocating more hangar bay space. The flight deck crew or a handler of the carrier deployed CMV-22s, he claimed, had not voiced any grievances. Concerns about the CMV-22B's suitability for the COD mission have also been raised in different ways. They include the absence of cabin pressurization, which we have already covered in great detail. The Osprey must travel over long distances at turboprop-like speeds while flying at lower altitudes unless its crew and passengers are using oxygen. That can include having to fly through extremely bad weather because the destination is typically far out at sea. According to Bloomberg News, the CMV-22B was not yet operationally appropriate, when the Navy stated in February that it had received its IOC because it had only partially met dependability standards, according to a classified study from the Pentagon's testing agency. The CMV-22's ice protection system was one of the issues, and it accounted for 25% of the operational mission failures, which will result in mission aborts. The high-frequency radios on board the aeroplane had problems as well. Despite these problems, the CMV-22B Osprey was determined to be operationally effective for carrier onboard delivery, medical evacuation, naval special warfare support, and search and rescue, according to Bloomberg News. Whitesell spoke about the CMV-22B's mission capability rate on Wednesday despite not addressing the contents of that study. In reference to a Navy program created to accomplish operational and maintenance goals by allowing for two to three month repair availabilities every 15 to 18 months, he added, for COD, you always have one in phased maintenance. Therefore, you always had a 66% mission capability even with the C-2. Our maintenance schedule for the first deployment of CMV-22 was exactly the same, which was confirmed. Despite having one of the platforms undergoing phased repair, we still had a mission capability rate of roughly 67%. However, at this point, we were examining the class maintenance plan for each of our platforms. The CMV-22 was safe and efficient on its initial deployment, he concluded, and added that, we'll start looking at all those plans just as we're doing for every other platform. Hope you guys love the video. Don't forget to hit the like button and please do subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to all. So you can get the notification on each upload.